Okay, welcome everybody to the very first edition of Go in 5 Minutes. Now this is episode 0 and we're going to be doing one of these every week. Today we're going to focus on unit tests in Go and mocking external dependencies for those unit tests. So a little background here. Uh, generally speaking, we write our code in uh, two big layers. The first top layer is called business logic. And then the business logic will talk to lower la layers. Excuse me. Uh, that, those layers may talk to databases or APIs or the file system or something else outside of your process. So today we're going to use Redis as an example of one of those external dependencies. And we're going to focus on testing some business logic that relies on Redis, but writing the test in such a way that we can swap out that Redis client for a local implementation of that client. Now there are languages out there that do that swapping, which we're calling mocking, uh, by using reflection uh, to swap up an implementations at runtime. Uh, monkey patching is another method which doesn't use reflection uh, directly, but it still does that swapping. And there are a couple other methods that I've heard of, uh, but all of them I kind of just refer to as magic because it's very difficult to figure out what's going on. But in the go way, we're going to focus on doing this in a simple and maintainable way. We're going to create an interface that the Redis client implementation can sit behind. And then we're also going to implement our own implementation of the interface that is the local implementation, and we can use that in our unit tests. So let's go jump into the Redis documentation very briefly to see what we're working with. We're going to create an interface, and then our business logic is going to use the get function, which you can see here takes in a key and returns a value, and a set function which you can see here, takes in the key value and returns an error if there was an error setting that value to the key. So let's jump into our code now. We'll go over to our hash table. This is the interface, mirrors the exact same functions that the Redis client had. There's a get and a set. And then we'll head over to our business logic here, which takes that hash table interface in and then does something currently very unexciting, but of course that could expand as you write a real program. Now the important part here, is the most important part of the screencast actually, is our business logic tests. You can see in our tests that on lines six and seven, we're creating that in-memory hash table that I'll show in a second, and then we're running our business logic. Now the in-memory hash table is the mock, and we're passing it into our business logic just as if it were the Redis hash table in production. Now lines eight and below here, are all making sure that the operations that business logic did on the hash table are correct. Now, of course, you could notice that this test is very short, but it will get much longer, of course, if the business logic implementation gets more complex. Now, the last part, the in-memory hash table. Now, this is the implementation of the in-memory hash table, which in and of itself will need to be tested, and that will be out of scope for today's discussion. But the important bits here are that a, on lines 14 and 24, we've got our functions that complete the implementation of the hash table interface. And B, we have made the in-memory hash table operate exclusively on this M variable, which is just an in-memory map. And as a side note, we're using this lock on line seven, uh, below on lines 15 and 16, and 25 and 26, to ensure that the in-memory hash table is concurrency safe. Now those are all topics that we'll have to cover in a later screencast, but as you can see here, we've, we've successfully implemented a mock and then passed that mock into our business logic as we've written a unit test for the business logic. Now this is a very scalable pattern. You can continue to build interfaces in this way for all kinds of dependencies and additionally for all kinds of code, such that you can swap out implementations of those interfaces at compile time, not at runtime, which is a very, very useful characteristic of this pattern. So I encourage you to go look at your code, look at some implementations that could potentially uh, be swapped out or need to be swapped out in the future, and put an interface in front of those implementations. It requires very little programmer overhead, and it requires almost no runtime overhead in Go. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, you can see all of this code and the outline we went over 
at bit.ly.com slash go in five minutes. That's all one word, go in five minutes. And we'll hope to see you back here for the next episode of Go in Five Minutes. Thanks.